So now I'm going to show you how to make the purse. So to make this purse, I used my 6 millimeter crochet hook. You're also going to need a tapestry needle or a darning needle and a pair of scissors. The yarn that I chose is I love this yarn metallic if you like it and the color is peacock. So I'm going to show you how to make these adorable purses for your koala. Now if you want the larger purse, this larger purse measures about 4 inches in width by 3 inches in height. This one I used a 6 millimeter crochet hook and if you like the smaller one which is 3 inches by about 3 inches then I used my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Now when you're making the top portion this top portion measures about, let me double check here, measures about three centimeters. So I made about three rows with the double crochet, whereas with the six millimeter, you only need two. So that's the only difference. The rest is made the same way. The only difference is I used a smaller hook for the smaller purse and the six millimeter hook for the larger purse. So you can decide, decide what size you want for your koala purse. So we're going to start with a slip knot. Go ahead and take your yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of 26. I'm just going to show you four on video tutorial. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 26 and then come back. After you finish your chain of 26, and mine measures about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inches across. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. So one single crochet in every stitch back across, and then that will give you a stitch count of 25. So now this is how my work looks. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work. So this chain one counts as your first stitch for this next row and you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. So take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. Then we're going to make a cluster into the next stitch. So now you're going to yarn over, you're going to insert the hook into the next stitch, you're going to bring up a loop, you're going to yarn over and go through two loops only, and then you're going to repeat that four more times. So you're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, four loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops only for one. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two loops only for two. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops only for three. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops only. So now you should have a total of six loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all six loops to complete a cluster. Then you're going to make one single crochet into the next two stitches. So you go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, 
and make a single crochet. Then you're just going to fix your cluster, kind of poof it out towards you, and push it over if you need to. So you finished your little cluster there. Then you're going to go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. And then you're going to make a cluster into the next stitch. So now I'm going to work another cluster with you. So you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, then yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, and you just keep repeating that until you have six loops remaining on your hook. So that's another way so you don't lose track of where you are with your yarning over and going through two loops. So now I have five. I know I need one more. Now I have six loops on my hook. I can yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all six to complete another cluster. Then I'm going to make single, one single crochet into the next two stitches and then repeat. So go ahead Finish your clusters all the way across, look how pretty that is, and then come back. So for mine, I finished with eight clusters. So I have two single crochet on this end, counting that first chain one that we made. And then I finished with two single crochet on this end. Then you're going to move up to the next row, so you just chain one, turn your work, and then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. So one single crochet in every stitch back across. Counting that first chain will count as your first stitch. So now I still have 25 stitches and then this is what it looks like on the other side. Looks really pretty. So now you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next two stitches and that will bring you in between the stitch in between the two honeycomb stitches from the previous row or two cluster stitches from the previous row. So then you're just going to make a single crochet into the next stitch, a single crochet into the next stitch, and then in the next stitch is where you're going to make your cluster because you want your cluster to fall in between or in the center of the previous row's two cluster stitches. So then you just yarn over, go into that stitch, bring up a loop, and then create your cluster. And remember, you'll stop when you have six loops on your hook. So I have four, five, and six. Then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and I'm going to keep the clusters facing the same side. So on the back you won't have the clusters. The clusters will be facing the front. And then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then my cluster will fall into the middle stitch. So go ahead, keep repeating your clusters and your two single, one single crochet into two stitches all the way across and then come back. So now I finished the second row and you can see how it starts to take the appearance of a honeycomb. And it looks really pretty. Now the other thing that people do with this stitch is you can create letters with this stitch. So it's just a lot of fun things that you can do with this honeycomb stitch or cluster stitch that forms a honeycomb. So now we're going to move up to the next row. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, 
And then you're just going to make one single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across. So your chain one counts for this row and when you finish this row you should still have a stitch count of 25. So I finished the row with a stitch count of 25. This is what the wrong side looks like and when you flip it over you have your honeycomb appearance with your cluster stitches. So now I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and I'm going to finish my last row of the honeycomb stitches. So now you want to make your honeycombs so that they line up with the previous row from your first row of clusters. So not this previous row, but the first row of clusters. So I'm going to go make a single crochet into the next stitch and then that will bring me to my cluster stitch which lines up with my first cluster from the first row. So I'm going to make my cluster And then I'm going to make a single crochet into two stitches. And then I can make my cluster into the next stitch. And you see how the clusters will line up with the first row of clusters. So go ahead, finish this row, and then come back. So now I just finished my last row of clusters and just look at that beautiful honeycomb appearance that's created. So this is the right side, this is the wrong side. So you shouldn't have any clusters showing on the wrong side. They're all facing towards the right side. Then we're ready to make the top of the purse. So right now we made the bottom of the purse. Now we're going to make three double crochet rounds for the top of the purse. So. We're going to make three rows of double crochet. So you're going to chain three. One, two, three. That counts as your first double crochet. Go ahead and turn your work. And then you're just going to make one double crochet into the next stitch. And one double crochet into every stitch across. You just yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a total of 25 double crochet for the row. And you're going to count that first chain three as a stitch. So I finished the row with 25 stitches. And this is what it looks like on the other side. So now you're going to chain three, one, two, three, turn your work, and then just make one double crochet in every stitch back across. So for mine, let me double check, so I just made two rows. So you're only going to make two rows of the double crochet, so this will be your last row of one double crochet in every stitch. So after you finish that second row of double crochet, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to fold your work in half so that the right sides are together. So just take your work, fold it in half, so that the right sides are together. And then you're going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch on the opposite side. Try to get in there. So in the top stitch on the opposite side, you're going to make a slip stitch. So you can see I have the wrong side facing me, the right sides are together. Then I'm going to make a slip stitch. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And now we're going to crochet 
the side and the bottom together. So you can chain one, then you're going to make a single crochet into the stitch of the one side and then the stitch on the other side to make a single crochet so you're single crocheting the two stitches together. And you're going to repeat that evenly spacing one single crochet and if it's easier you can just go right under the double crochet on both sides and that'll work too instead of trying to fiddle with trying to get into the stitch. And you want to line up the edges so that they're together. So I'm going to go under the double crochet on its side and under the opposite side and just bring up a single crochet. And then I want a single crochet in the same stitch twice. So under that double crochet I'm putting two single crochet there. Then I'm going to go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. And I'm just going to make one single crochet evenly spaced. Make sure that they're lined up keep the clusters so that they're on the right side and then you're just going to single crochet the two edges together and if it's easier you can sew with your tapestry needle so whatever is easiest for you I just like I think it's quicker just to crochet the edges together so now I've reached the bottom I'm going to grab that bottom corner and the bottom stitch and then make two single crochet into the same stitch and then turn the work so that I have the bottom of the purse and I'm going to close the bottom of the purse and make sure you keep the clusters on the right side and then the bottom of the purse is a little bit easier so I'm going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to go behind this loose yarn end so that I can bury it and I'm going to make two single crochet into the same stitch for that first stitch on the bottom. Then I'm just going to make one single crochet into the next stitch, going behind the loose yarn end, and then just make one single crochet in every stitch across the bottom of the purse. And then that just closes up the side and the bottom of the purse and here is the opening for the top so this is how my work looks I finished crocheting all around the side and the bottom when you finish your last stitch go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work and then go ahead and get your tapestry needle to bury the loose yarn end. So you just take and put the loose yarn end on the tapestry needle and then just kind of weave it through the bottom of the purse and then just trim it. Then you're ready to turn the purse inside out and you have the bottom of the purse ready. Now I'm going to show you how to make the, the handle, the strap for the handle. So now for the strap of the handle you want to find the side of the purse and the, the handle width is three stitches. So you're going to form, you're going to go into, you have the right side facing you, go into the top stitch of the, you have three stitches on the side, go into that first stitch and bring up a loop. Go ahead and chain one, tie a knot, then chain three, and then you're going to make one double crochet into the next stitch, which is the middle stitch along the side then another double crochet into the next stitch. And 
Then you can chain three, turn your work, make a double crochet into the next stitch, and one double crochet into the last stitch. And you're going to keep repeating this until you have the length that you want for your handle. So I'm going to chain three, turn my work, make a double crochet into the next stitch, and one double crochet into the last stitch. So keep repeating this until you have the length that you want for your handle. When you come back I'll show you how much mine, how many rows I made. So for mine I made eight rows. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the strap to the opposite side. So then Go ahead and bury the loose yarn end at the bottom. Then you're going to take, make sure that your strap isn't twisted and bring it over to the opposite side. Get your tapestry needle on the long end that you left for sewing and again make sure that the handle is not twisted and I like to sew it to the inside. Make sure that you have it lined up with the opposite side and that it's not crooked. Then you just take your long end that you left for sewing and then just sew the strap to the opposite side. I like to sew it into a square shape going up and down about a centimeter and then just sewing the strap. Make sure you don't sew it to the opposite side like I just did. So go ahead finish sewing your strap in place and then come back and this is how my purse looks when I'm all finished and then here is the inside